Let's uh, talk about uh, when you go shopping and this continuing thing. We talk about the high street and the, the death of the high street and will the high street be a thing of the past uh, very, very soon. Mm. Well, uh, we bring in my favourite economist for this, the economics commentator, Laura Laird. Laura, very lovely to lovely see you to again. See you. How many favourite economists do you have? You're, How long is you're that my list? You're my favourite. <laughs> and I like, um, what's his name, at lunchtime? What's his name? Liam Halligan. I like him. I like him. Or Liam, or as Ruth called him, why don't you call him? Uh, she gave him a different name oh. completely, but anyway. Uh, Liam is very good. But, um, but you're my favourite. <laughs> um, so, listen, we're talking about this, Laura, because uh, John Lewis, they are taking on people. Good, good news, bad news, I suppose, for the high street is they're taking them on online. Absolutely. And they're taking on about 150 people. Remember, John Lewis has let more than 4,000 go from their main bricks yeah. and mortar retail operation over the past year. So this seems to be John Lewis saying, wait a second, we're, we're almost abandoning the high street and we're moving online. They say 70 percent of their sales are now online, which is an extraordinary yeah. number. Problem is, is that online sales aren't holding up quite quite as well as we expected. Remember, during the pandemic, we all got to grips with online. We all thought this was the way forward. But online sales haven't held up the way a lot of on online retailers would have liked. But that's because people don't have money. We're in this big credit squeeze. There we go. And that's the point. It's hard to say. It's hard to see that any kind of retail is yes. going to hold up. And a lot of retailers are talking right now. They're not quite sure whether people aren't buying because they're starting to feel this squeeze yeah. or are they not buying because they're reading about this squeeze that's in the newspapers all the time and that you and I are talking about because those energy bills haven't start to hit yet. We're seeing higher food prices. Oh, they have. They have. Are you feeling it so yeah, far? I, I know people. I know somebody whose energy bill went up 900%. I'm talking about Northern Ireland. I mean, it, it's different because uh, we're not online as such. A lot of it is um, bottled ga uh, gas and, uh, you know, tanker deliveries of oil and all that sort of thing. But I, I do think people have got to look ahead. I think people are thinking about whether they should have a holiday. I think people are already thinking about how can I afford... Christmas. Well, and that's going to get a lot worse yes. because we're in an environment where we don't use as much heating fuel as we would in November or December. Yes. We're likely to see that fuel cap right. rise again in October see, just when we're using there's, this stuff. There's nobody more so than me that would talk about the romance of the high street and why I think a high street is good for a community. Uh, definitely do. And it's great sociability and things. But we're all the same now. We're all contributing to the death of the high street. It's more convenient for me to go online. You don't meet people. You don't have people who then work in these department stores um, as well. Um, from, a, from a mixing point of view, community point of view, it's not good at all. But listen, parking's an issue. Um, uh, the the, the uh, ease of getting stuff online is just incredible. We're all lazy. We order our food online. We order... Our clothes online. I'm everything. as guilty as yes, anybody. Yeah. I'd much rather shop from my bed than put my shoes on and, and battle through self-serve at my local Tesco. But I agree with you. Retailing has been an incredibly important part of the economy here. And it's important for employing young people. I have teenage girls. Where do you get your yes. first Saturday job? You go, you work in a retailer, you get yes. a little bit of experience there. But when I talk to my colleagues who are in the, the bricks and mortar area, they're absolutely frightened. They're frightened about the rising cost of labor. They're frightened about the, the rising cost of running these things. You know, we can turn off our energy a little yeah. bit. If you have a shop that's open 12 hours a day, lighting. you have all that lighting, lighting, you have heating, you may yeah. have air conditioning. They're terrified about this. So, net result, we've got to get new to, used to a new reality, don't we? Well, we have, to, we have to figure out how we want to shop. And what I'm hearing is that footfall in these shops is not, it's coming back. It's not as bad as people anticipated. But what seems to be missing is impulse buying. So if people go out to their local high yes, street, yeah. they go with intent. They yes. have a mission to buy. But retailers aren't seeing the kind of browsing, the kind of impulse buying that we used to see. When was the last time you were in a department store? Oh, I can't think. But I do mm. like one. And I do I think know. you're right, Laurie. There are those occasions when you've looked online, but you think you just need to go and try it on in the flesh or, or test drive it if it's a buggy or whatever it might be. And then you can go and make your purchase. Or You, you want to go into a shop for comparison yeah. purposes, perhaps. But do you know, do you know what's peculiar, buy? though, is I've, I mentioned that Internet sales have, have 
gone down over the yeah. past six months. They were down 6% month on month in March. Department store sales have actually been holding up. They had a very bad December, but really good rebound mm. in the mm. early part of the year. So it's interesting. It's nice to feel and touch and look. If you want to buy a suitcase, you want to see, you know, would it suit me? Do I like mm. the hand or whatever? One of the great joys in my life, both as a child and as a parent, um, was to be in toy shops. You know, to bring my I children. I taking my children. <laughs> I, I can't, I'm with you, Isabel. I have four of them. I can't think of anything worse. I, I think men are more in touch with toys. Yeah. Men are oh. more childlike. And, and also, more you're more generous. Impressed. You'd probably say yes to anything the little ones asked for. Well, whereas I'd be like, no, nope, that's too much screen time. No, nope, that's yeah. not oh, good. Or, or too you. much. You get your hands because out of the buggy. Get kids, kids, my kids would make the mistake of going with their mum, whatever, to a, um, a toy shop in which those restrictions apply. I used to say to them, you want anything, just come with me. That's because so I, who made the mistake here? Well. Yeah. But, but the, the experience, what I'm trying to say is the joy of a child experiencing toys, looking whether they get them or not. Uh, and there's always a birthday at school yeah, or something, yeah, yeah. you've got to be buying something, whatever. But I always thought that was a very joyous, beautiful experience. Um, and it's a retail experience uh, as well. But, but that's gone. But isn't it funny, though, because toy shops, this retail kind of straightening hit toy shops years ago. Hamley's has been gone mm. for ages. Toys R Us. It's gone. Oh, oh, it's been it's com- reduced, it? absolutely yeah. reduced. It's changed owners so many times because nobody can really make money out of it. Yes, yeah. Toys R Us, remember the big chain yeah. in, in sort of out-of-town yeah. retailing parks. That's been gone for ages. Nobody yeah. could make that that that. Format work. But it's like, I mean, I could romantically talk to you about Woolworths and then you would say, well, when were you actually last in it? And that's a whole I was story. a big Woolworths fan. That, yeah. I mean, the, yeah. the, the evaporation of Woolworths changed my life. Yeah. No, no I, I, I know. I mean, as a teenager, I would have bought Elton John and Kinky D in, uh, in Woolworths. <laughs> Kinky D. Kinky D. Kinky D. <laughs> in Woolworths in 1976. <laughs> And you could have got anything you wanted, anything you oh, wanted anything. in, in Woolworths. Uh, uh, I remember when, when records were 10p. Yeah, but now. 50p, maybe it's 50p, 50p in line. I sit on Instagram and then the shopping adverts pop up because they kind of know, in, you know, what I'm, what I'm into or what I want. And then I do my buying, impulse buying through Instagram, which is a nightmare. And, and you are this new wave. This is, this is how shoppers, this is how companies want to monetize people. And no one is doing it better than Shein. Have you heard of yeah, Shein? Yeah. It's a Chinese conglomerate, very secretive, uh, but said to be worth a hundred billion US dollars. Although it's privately held, we don't see their mm-hmm. accounts. But Shein is displacing Zara. It's displacing H&M. It's displacing Primark. Although returns are a complete a nightmare street. with them. I, I, they're all so secretive. My, how, do my, I send it? how do I send it back? How my my kids, kids are big fans. Someone? I haven't tried it yet. Yeah, it's very I worked, cheap. I worked in Primark for a year. So I did, as a trainee manager. So did. Your mum would have loved it if you'd have stayed there. Yeah, how did, how did, how did, I, how did you book, leave? How did you get a here? Book, a book on ex- explanations there. And um, the worst thing you have to deal with in, in a big shop like that are people. <laughs> It'd be great if they had no customers. You love people. What are you on about? Oh, you work in retail, you work in any service industry, and you will hate Complaining people. all day long. Yeah. Just moan, moan, moan. I just want to say, shut up. <laughs> well, have you ever shut been up. to the Primark and Marble Arch? It, it, it's like the population of a small country. I can't leave that store without yes. bursting into tears. It's so mobbed. And they don't do uh, online, as far as I'm aware. No, they don't, yeah. No, no. That, that's amazing. But you see, one of the big villains in all of this who are rarely mentioned are landlords in the high street, greedy mm-hmm. landlords. I mean, if I go, uh, I mean, local uh, uh, traders, you try and go to an optician's, for instance, and they're just forced out all of the time because... Well, also the, the business rates from the well, councils. And, and yeah. this is a very, very big deal. And I hear retailers say this to me all the time. We simply, they had a holiday on business rates during the pandemic, yeah. that all of that pandemic support is going away. And they say the government doesn't want to hear from them, that yeah. all of their pleas yeah. are falling on deaf ears. No, I agree with you. Um, so, so the landlords, they suck the life out of the high street and then they're going to be left with 
properties that no one wants eventually. And, and what are they going to do with them then? That's a whole other story <laughs> for another day, uh, Laura. But really lovely to talk to you. Thanks and for you that. Guys. Thanks for having me. And if you have a high street story to tell, because we were, we were talking about this in the local elections mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, some people we were speaking to in East Lothian uh, this morning were saying, um, look, high street is one of the issues that yeah. they want dealt with because without a high street, you don't have a community. Yeah, although my high street is all estate agents and nail bars and hairdressers. And I have to say, and restaurants, and there is quite a sense of community in all of those places. Like it or loathe estate agents, they live and know the area often. Nail bars, people coming from the local streets. I find where I live, the high, high street seems to be quite alive. It's just with, not necessarily retail. With charity retail. shops. Yeah, charity shops. Charity and that's, shops you know, circular well. economy. It's not all bad. Um, it's not all bad. Yeah, what, uh, what, what is bad on the high street? What are you fed up looking at? Well, there's barbers everywhere. I don't like kebab shops. Do you not? No. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, this is wish, our local... I wish, wish I could agree with you yeah. <laughs> uh, on that. But um, I think it's a lovely thing um, as well. If you're able to live near a high street, my goodness me, and you can pop out to the shops and you can pop out to whatever the restaurant yeah, or fast food I love that. takeaway is. That that must be a great privilege mm -hmm. um, to have there. Oh, there you are, back to drink again. <laughs> back to drink. <laughs>